Have you ever finished building a website, shown it to a client, and they say, that is not what I pictured at all? We all know that's painful, right? Hours of work down the drain. Now, that's where prototyping comes in. Some people swear it saves them from endless revisions, angry clients, and expensive mistakes. Others think it's just a flashy time waster. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly when prototyping is a secret weapon that makes your project smoother, faster, and more profitable, and when it's just a drain on your time and budget. So stick around because by the end, you'll know if prototyping will actually help you or if you're better off skipping it all together and go straight to development. And before we dive in, I want to hear from you. Do you use prototyping in your workflow or do you think they slow down projects? Drop the answers in the comment section. I'll be jumping there later and seeing what you've commented on. So let's start off with part one on why prototyping is a good option. So reason one is the clarity of communication. Explaining a website idea with words alone can be confusing. Prototypes give clients, designers, and developers a shared reference point. For example, Airbnb has spoken about using interactive prototypes to test and refine flows in the early days of the platform. It made sure the whole team could agree before a single line of code was written. So if you ever had a client who says, I'll know it when I see it, this is your shortcut. And clarity is just the start. The next benefit can actually save you from some expensive headaches. Spotting problems early. Now, we don't need fancy stats to know this. Catching issues before development is cheaper and less stressful than fixing them after launch. Usability tests with prototypes often reveal simple but critical issues, like confusing navigation or missing calls to action that might otherwise go unnoticed until users start complaining. Think of it like checking your map before a road trip. It's easier to reroute before you've already driven 200 miles in the wrong direction. But finding problems early is only half the story. What if you could also see how real users behave on that design before you even launch? This is where recent three real user testing comes in handy. Prototypes let you put something in front of actual users to see how they behave. Retail companies often prototype their checkout processes by watching testers try to buy a product and they learn if the flow feels smooth or if users are likely to abandon their cart. This isn't hypothetical. Businesses regularly use tools like Figma, Penpot, or Envision for this exact reason. And the feedback can directly influence design decisions that improve conversions. And when the feedback rolls in, you'll want to make changes quickly, which is exactly where the next point comes into play. Speedy iterations. Changing code takes time. Changing a prototype is much quicker. Tools like Figma or Penpot allow for rapid adjustments so you can explore different layouts, color schemes, or interactions without burning developer hours. It's like sketching in pencil before you paint anything. It's much easier to erase that and try again to get the perfect end result. But sometimes speed isn't just about design. It's about getting people on your side. That's where prototypes really shine. Reason number five, stakeholder buy-in. Sometimes you're not designing for users. You're designing for bosses, investors, or clients who need convincing. Now, Dropbox is a great example. Before building their full product, they created a demo video of a prototype. That simple move turned early skeptics into believers and helped them secure funding and beta users. Prototypes aren't just design tools. They can be powerful persuasion tools. But before you start prototyping everything, let's flip that script because there are some real downsides you'll want to know about. Part two, the downsides. Overkill for small projects. If you're building a straightforward three-page site for a local cafe or small business, spending weeks prototyping is probably unnecessary. In those cases, it can be faster and more efficient and cheaper to build directly in a tool like WordPress or another builder. And while that sounds obvious, the next problem is a little sneakier and it can really damage client trust. False sense of completion. Now, prototypes often look polished, which can trick clients into thinking the project is almost done. But of course, design and code are two completely different things. Managing that expectation can be tough. When they come back and say, it looks like it's finished, so why isn't it ready to launch? The misunderstanding can create friction in projects if it's not addressed upfront and early on. And speaking of friction, let's talk about something every freelancer and small agency has to juggle, money. So the extra costs, prototyping tools are affordable, but the real cost is in time, your time. For small businesses on tight budgets, those extra hours may feel better spent on things like marketing, SEO, or content creation. 
So while prototypes can add value, they also add expense and not every client will see that return on their investment. And if you think money is the biggest problem, wait until you've had a client fall into this next trap. Endless tweaks. We've probably all been there and if you haven't, at some point you will. Because prototypes are easy to adjust, they can lead to design by committee. You get stuck in loops of minor revisions, things like move this button, change the font, try a different color, and deadlines start to slip, not what you want. So with that discipline, prototyping can stretch projects longer than actually building them. And even if you survive the revision loop, you might still hit this final stumbling block. Prototypes are not always realistic. And prototypes can sometimes promise more than the reality delivers. So for example, things like transitions in a prototype might look buttery smooth, but the real product may lag due to things like server speed or browser limitations. The gap between expectation and reality can disappoint users, or worse, your clients, if you don't manage them carefully. So let's wrap things up with a conclusion. Should you bother with website prototyping? That's the question we're here to answer. And if you're building something complex, testing with users, or need to win over stakeholders, then yes, it can save headaches and boost your success rate. But if the project is small, the budget is tight, or the timeline is short, you may be better off skipping it completely and go straight into design. The key is to treat prototyping as a tool and not a rule. Use it when it adds value, and don't be afraid to go straight to development when it simply doesn't make sense. So what's your experience? If you thought I've saved your projects or turned them into a time sink, drop your stories in the comments below. I would love to hear them. As always, all applicable links for everything I talk about in this video will be down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.